Hey everybody, Donna Woods with Health Made Simple. And this guest is one of our very favorite people. Her name is Catherine Ludwig and we affectionately call her Kat. Um, and we met Kat through, uh, she appeared to us, she started taking our courses and she uh, has gone through our full certification program. And, um, and that's how we met her. And, you know, she's been with Photonic Health for, gosh, quite a long time. How long has it been? Uh, oh, my youngest is now 13 and he was a toddler um, when I got introduced to the light. So almost 13, 14 years right. I've known about wow. it. And Isn't that crazy? It's nuts. Nuts. But what we're going to chat with Kat about, Kat is a woman of many, many talents. And so I really want to share a story with you guys. And I really wanted to interview her because two years ago, we had a situation with one of our horses where we had practically, we had every top equine practic practitioner out, could not figure out what in the heck was going on with her. Um, every time we do a hyoid release, she would go into thumps and she would start tossing her head and she would get terribly agitated. And we've done hyoid release on thousands of horses and it's always had the opposite effect. So we were super perplexed. And so, um, one of our mutual colleagues, um, Becky Tengis came over, um, and she did an evaluation. She goes, hold on, Donna. I got to call Kat. I need her help. <laughs> and I was like, and this was a talent that I really wasn't aware of that you had <laughs> developed. And so I was like, well, okay, Becky, I trust you. So do whatever you want to do, but okay, we'll discuss it later. And so she called and I think within five minutes, Kat had said, it's in the head. She can get over it. We have to be patient. Um, but you got to go there. And so we were like, okay, like, okay. And what, and what happened from that is you really gave us an, a target area to zone in on. And, um, it has been a process. So that was two years. Can you believe it was two years ago? No, <laughs> it doesn't seem that, that long two ago. Two years it's ago. Now, just Tuesday of this week. Um, so what ended up happening is we ended up um, having her scoped, found out she had chondroids in her guttural pouch, which is like uber rare, super rare. And not only were they chondroids, but they were so large that they could not go in and retrieve them. And um, so it has been a process, exactly like you said. We've been very patient. Um in addition to patients, we've been we put her on some special herbs, and we've also been doing um, ultrasound therapy on her. Just had her scoped. There are no more chondroids in her guttural pouch. Yay! So yay, sorry. yay! <laughs> so, um, Kat, how do you like? Give me your I like. How did you get into animal communication? Because that's a form of what, like, that's what you, one of, one of your many gifts. Thank you. Um, I, I think I did it when I was younger, but not quite grasping all that was there. Right. Um, I, I got my first horse when I was 12 and I lost him when I was in high school to EPM. Okay. And he was there to teach me a lot of things. Yeah. And there were a lot of moments of, well, I'm kind of thinking it. And then you hear this little voice and you think, oh, I'm nuts. And I wasn't nuts. Okay. <laughs> but you don't tell people what you're doing because they will tell you you're nuts. Right. Um, so I remember being pregnant with my first child and I went to a three-day course for learning essentially how to communicate. And... um when I communicate with animals, there's sometimes a conversation like you and I have. Yep. There's sometimes images that they will show me in my head and it plays kind of like a movie. So I have to be the mediator and say, all right, I'm seeing this and this. And then sometimes 
animals will make my body hurt where theirs hurts. Okay. So then I can describe it. Right. Um, I don't always know which way a conversation is going to go. Um, and I had taken, I had taken that class and got a very general grasp of the idea. Okay. And throughout practice, um, communication, I've, I've probably done thousands of animals, but it doesn't stay in my head because I'd have no room for anything else, like a grocery list or whatever. I still need to forget. Right. Um, so when I do the sessions, because energy is energy, mm-hmm. it, if I repeat a session with a horse or go to the next time with a horse or a dog or a cat or a pig, um, I get a glimpse of what we did and what we went to. Okay. And for the communication aspect, there are, there are some general guidelines and rules. I've found over the years that horses have on average about 11 owners, which is a lot. It's a lot of baggage to unpack with, with them. Yeah. Um, and sometimes when I'm working with the owner that's, that's called in need, um, sometimes things that are being discussed are owner two and three issue where it occurred, right? but you're owner seven or eight and we need to get through that blockage. Right. Um, and there are ones that have passed on that people ask about. Um, and those, those are always interesting. Um, they're hard. The ones that have passed on are the ones that are in need to pass. And even, even though you're trying to bring comfort and you do bring comfort to a level, the communication is a really serious tool. It's, it's a tool in how you use it. Um, but, but after I'd taken that three-day course and developed, I went into more energy work to solidify my safety when I do communications. I love that. So important. So, so, so important. And it's not, a, um, you know, it's not something that a lot of energy practitioners talk about. Um, you know, we talk about, you know, being an empath and being an um, uh, animal communicator. We talk about obviously red light therapy practitioner, uh, body worker, Reiki. And yeah. there's an energetic protection component of it that. Um, and you and I have discussed it because I know you were doing some other work um, overseas um, mm-hmm. about that whole protection component of that. And so I love yeah. that you bring that up because it's not something that is necessarily addressed when you're learning that particular, whatever particular uh, skill you're going for. Right, right. And and I, I don't mean this to sound... Um, crass or mean but whenever clients come in there is always is this for me to work on is this is this really am I to do it or am I to give this to somebody else um and that is something that even though you want to help them all yeah you have to take that seriously yeah um and and it's always a part of a journey that that I'm continuously learning, continuously. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Always, right? Yes. Always, always, always. So, um, you know, you so you talk to animals that are currently here, and you also talk to ones that have crossed over. Yes. Okay, because that's pretty unusual because a lot of animal communicators, um, they'll either do one or the other, but they will not do both. I, I don't like people. Um, <laughs> I don't like, I'll take animals any way, shape, any or form. Day, any day. People are a little sketchy. <laughs> Right. We, we yep. have our, own, we, we, we have all of our own baggage to contend with. Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but I, I have to say some, some of the weirdest ones, um, like I, I was doing, um, uh, for a 4-H group. Right. I, I was up and, uh, so parents and kids were there 
and we were going around and, and we were all talking about their animals and this, this poor dog, he was like, um, I got to talk to you. I'm like, okay, you know, what's up, bud? And he's like, she stopped feeding me the pig ears when she sneaks out of the house to go see the boyfriend. Oh, oh, <laughs> and I said, oh dear. Um, I was like, uh, and of course the mom and the kid are there and they're like, so what's he saying? And I just kind of went, don't shoot the messenger on this one, but um, you've stopped feeding him pig ears. And she's like, <gasps> you could see just the, the, the sheer, oh no. And mom's like, we'd never give him pig ears. And I said, well, um, he needs a restock of the pig ears that he gets at night because she's going out the window to the boyfriend. And it was just, oh, my Lanta. I was like, <laughs> oh, <no." laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I was, I, you know, you're wearing the parent hat of, I better know if my kid's doing something. And then you're wearing the, Ooh, the dog just told on you. <laughs> right. Oh my God. That's hilarious. Mom paid you double and the daughter <laughs> wanted to crawl in a hole and die. Basically, basically yeah. it was, it was shocking. And then they were, they were all at that point. It, it's hard because, you know, like you said, people either do or don't believe in this. Yeah. And I, I do not know the, I didn't know the four haters. I didn't know the parents. I was just like, oh my gosh. Right. So that's hilarious. It's, it's led to some very, very interesting ones. Um, yeah, I've done work for some police organizations in um, Arizona. Okay, their canine units. Um, one was had retired from police work, and um, it was it was time, and that that's that's always tough right um, always tough the the owner had done so much for this dog and this dog he knew his job forwards backwards upside right. down and inside out he yeah. even though the back legs weren't working he knew like oh I can do that I can do that and I've done this and right and right. he's like but why doesn't it work right ah and I said, bud, it's, it's all that, that stuff you've done, that wear and tear. Um, and it was time and he, he was like, okay. And, and he went and, um, she was really grateful to be able to have that, that peacefulness, um, right. with it. Yeah. And, you know, she called a few weeks later because I had said something about another, a funky looking Malinois coming in. Okay. She ended up with a funky looking new partner. Oh, wow. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's so cool. And that's one of the things, because I know that, you know, you and I, I have Im utilized your services as, um, for emergencies. Um, we had a couple of like last year was not a good year for us. We lost six animals in a span of 10 months, eight months. And so it was really rough. And, um, you know, it, it, it just came to the point where I was like, I, I don't have the energy. I don't have the emotional capacity to like to even function at this point in time by the time it came to I think animal four or five and six um and so I was like okay cat I gotta have your help here because I I, I I just I I can't I'm done I'm done and so um it's one of the things I really appreciate you highlighting is because most people don't think of calling their animal communicator when there's an emergency situation going on or a crisis. And I know necessarily that you don't want to be the crisis one, but it's sometimes I think it's easier and yep. better on everybody. If you, if you could be the voice piece for the animal earlier on in that situation from an intervention perspective. Yes. Sometimes it is nice to do those check-ins, those wellness checkups, and then be like, wait, this is on the horizon. 
or, right. or, you know, Hey, um, go here, just, just monitor it. Um, but yes, there are those, those moments of people will call. Um, and it's like, yep, got to take this. This is, this is in the moment. Um, and animals are very clear, some clearer to a, a person that's not their owner. Correct. Sometimes. Yes. Um, and it's like, yeah, they're ready. Time to go. Time to go. Time to go. Yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah. So, um, yay. I love that. So do you have any, does Ravi have anything to say? I'm going to put you on the spot here. Put me on the spot. Um, for, for you, it's not the peppermints, but what is the funky thing? So I, oh my God, that's hilarious. I have been, we have been treating her with a series of herbs. And one of the herbs that I just added in, in the past six months has been um, hemp. Does it get in her teeth? She does not like it. Yeah. It's um because it's in her teeth. It's like a I don't know what you call them. You can get them in hay more more west than us. The oh. the barb thingies. Yeah, what yeah. Fox foxtails? Foxtails, yeah. She compares it to being stuck like that. Oh, how interesting. How it's it's grainy. It's yucky. Well, it's pretty strong. The stuff that I have is pretty strong. You would swear that it's like not just hemp. <laughs> and so I did quit giving her that, but I started giving her her other herbs and she still is like turning up her nose. No. Where where did or or have you looked at the clove orange? um the clove orange i think is in the blend the um i'm using a product it's called it's a it's for racehorses actually to clear their nasal passages and i think it's got clove and orange in it when you said nasal yeah she went to italian cooking have you used oregano i have not Try the oregano. Okay. And she says she'll she'll curl, but let her keep smelling okay. it. Almost, um, almost if you put it like on your hand or on a cotton ball and let her let her. With okay. Uh, awesome. I can do that. Does she feel like she can start uh, being ridden with a bit? Um, with the whole situation going on. What was the bit you used? I I have had a professional bit fitter out. Uh, she has tr had several different bits in her mouth. <laughs> She's oh like, it's worse than the dentist. They all go in there and they're looking. <laughs> it's... What is the game you play where you put the plastic piece and you try to speak? It's a card game for kids. Oh, I have no idea. She compared, like, that's how she references it to me is like, that's what it is. Okay. Um, it comes over, has a very low port and comes out, but it's movable on multiple aspects. What is that bit? Um, well, that's the one that I'm using currently on Desafio. Maybe we have to share. Okay, I can do that. <laughs> awesome. Oh, okay. And does she feel like the chondroids are gone and that that is no longer an issue? Those are gone. Um, when you when you feed her. Is it wet? It is wet. Yes. Okay. Because she said the the wetter, the smoother it goes for her, okay. the less thinking she has to have. Okay. So she likes that aspect of it. Keep okay. keep that. That's a keep. That's a keep. Okay. And so I'll, one last question. Um, 
So we have an, intentionally not been illuminating her hyoid because, of course, the thumps has been very uncomfortable for her. But now that these chondroids are gone, we were considering doing the hyoid release on a regular basis and then also using the IllumiVet underneath, like closest to the left guttural pouch, which is the, where there were issues, to see if that would further um, enhance what's already been accomplished. She says you can do them after you do the stomach meridian. Oh, okay. She would like the stomach meridian done, um, but S1 with the green. Okay. okay. And then the red can be red. Okay. And you, she's funny. She's okay. Here come the directions. S1 is going to be green. The rest are going to be red. And you're going to do the left side stomach meridian. Okay. And, and leave the right for now. Okay. All righty. Hey, my horse says he doesn't need a girth when we ride. So I validate and I like the opinions, but I don't always go with what they give me all the time. <laughs> Correct. Because yes, we <laughs> sort of need a girth. To we, ride. Do. <laughs> we do. I can balance, but I am not that good. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank You're you welcome. for that. And this is what the part that I love about the animal communication and especially like zoning in on some health stuff, because that's not like, you know, we can teach the assessment all day long. We can teach you how to check um, alarm points. We can, you know, we can, we can teach you all these checks and balances, but sometimes yes. they definitely know better what they need to heal versus a human being involved. Yep. Yep. They, they do. Um, and, and sometimes it's, you just, you don't, you can't question it, even right. though you'd like to question it and you're just right. like, well, okay. Okay. Right. Exa exactly. And yes, I love that. So thank you. Thank you so much. I will go out and do that and then give you feedback on, um, on, on her response. Um, so yay. Thank you for doing that because it's just, it's a great example. Cause there's a lot, I know that there's a lot of people in our audience that have used, um, animal communicators, but there's also some that don't, and there's a little bit of a, apprehension about it because they're not exactly sure like do they need to ask a specific question or what does it look like and things like that so just you right. being able to give like a brief little example and I have to say that you know sometimes that's all it is is I just need I just need that five minutes of clarity like yep. it doesn't have to be a long drawn out process right I will often compare it to when you take your vehicle to the garage, you usually make an appointment and say, Hey, I need a loop oil filter. And will you check the brakes? Um, and right. it's when people will call to communicate, I will ask, you know, what is it where, what's your goal or what are we working around or what is the, what is the issue or what's the non-issue or the discussion we want to go towards? Um, um, because it's not like, Oh, does he love me? Well, it's not that superficial. We're going to go deep. Right. And we're right. going to get, get there. We're, we're, yeah. we're going to, we're going to find out if the daughter's going out the window to see the right. boyfriend. <laughs> right. We're going to know what's going on. We're going to know. And, and maybe sometimes that's, a, that's what people are afraid of is, is we're going to find out the truth. So anyways, yeah. Kat, this has been fabulous as always. Um, Thank you. If people are interested in your services, how can they get a hold of you? Um, I have a website. It's blazingstarstables.com and they can go right to there or um, they can reach me on my cell phone. I take texts a lot better than I take phone calls because people keep reaching for my car insurance, you know? Right. Um, so it's 207-441. Five zero seven one. I'm in Maine, so I'm on Eastern Standard Time, but I will work wherever. Um, awesome. Yay. Yeah. Love that. Well, thank you so much for being on today. I sure appreciate it. 
Thank you. Um, thank you for everything you do. Thank you. Thank you for watching this edition of Photonic Health Presents Health Made Simple. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications for all new Photonic Health videos.